and we are live. Hi, everybody. It's Morning Alhar, but you should know that because you will be seeing this because you're one of my friends. And if we don't know each other personally <laughs> yet, I hope that happens soon. I'm not on my own this evening. I've got the amazing Laura Sarant with me, Professor Laura Sarant, OBE, <laughs> I wouldn't mind. You must love when people do this, do you, Laura? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. I'm, own, I'm owning it, Maura. I'm owning that. Owning you know. it. I worked hard I it. for it, so I'm owning it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want Laura to come on and share with how um, share with everybody her success over the last few months, where she was, where she is now, to show you what's possible. So, if you're somebody who's working in corporate, if you are working in a job and you're working in your coaching business on the side, listen to what Laura has been able to do while working full time over the last few months. So, Laura, say hello to everybody. Introduce yourself. Where are you? Where are you from? Hi, everybody, and uh, I hope everything is well where you are. Um, I am um, I'm here at the, at the moment. I'm actually in Birmingham, although I actually live in um, the Midlands in a small market town um, called Retford, which is just off the A1, if anybody knows where that is. For international people, where I'm actually right in the middle of the country. It takes the same amount of hours to drive north and south to the borders and east and west where I live. So I am geographically in the center of England. <laughs> Fantastic. And tell everybody what you do. Um, I work as a um, leadership development coach and I specialize particularly with women um, who are leaders and business owners who are fighting um, imposter syndrome and one things and how to get them to ditch that to start kind of playing themselves small and actually continue to be the fabulous trailblazing people they actually are. So that's mm. the work that I do. Um, and, I, and I kind of specialize also within the, those women's groups with women that I would say are um, diverse leaders or diverse business owners, meaning that they're not usual. There's something about them. It might be their um, social situation, it might be part of their characteristics, or it might be the industry that they're in, that they're mm. kind of not the typical people you find there. So I do leadership in diversity and leadership for diversity. Oh, amazing. That is amazing work. I love it. And why don't you tell everybody like where you were a few months ago? So we started working together around September time, something like that. Yeah, I think I did. Um, I did um, one of the um, the promotions, the um, six feet, the one month promotions I did in August. And uh -huh. because remember August bank holiday was just before bank holiday, I did my first masterclass. Do you remember we had that, I had that, that tsunami of interest in a masterclass that I didn't think anybody was going to come to. So, so, so let's talk about that for a second. Mm. So this was like your first sort of offer to let people know what you were up to. So tell tell everybody what happened. Like you weren't really doing this. And then all of a no, sudden. I mean, yeah. I have been working in I'm a nurse by background. I qualified way back in um, in 86. I started my nursing career in 1982. So um, last year was 40 years that I'd been a nurse and I worked in various jobs and worked nationally and internationally with governments. And I hold a full time a regional strategic role leading kind of around um, nursing and healthcare. And I've always, for about, I would say, a good 15 years, had coaching and mentorship and development as kind of like my side hustle. So mm. it was the thing that I did for people if they asked. I didn't do anything proactively around that. Um, but I started to think that I was at, being asked more and more and more to do this and actually didn't really have time to do it. Or um, certainly when I spoke to you, Moira, I was very re responsive in mm. what I did. So I had such a wide portfolio of things that I coached on, things that I talked about. I, you know, I did um, a global national keynote speaker. I've done chairing, but I tended to do what people asked me to do rather than having any, what, any sense of what I wanted to do. Mm. Um, and what I felt like was that I wanted to have more structure and purpose to um, the coaching and speaking that I did. So I came along to, uh, I was recommended, you were recommended to me by a good friend of mine who also works with you, Tayaba. And mm. just by um, fortune, we were together at an event and we were just having a bit of a chat over a glass of wine. And she said to me, you need to speak to Moira. Because she said, you're doing everything 
but you can do anything, but you don't have to do everything. So I was just constantly running around doing lots of things and working full time. Mm. Um, and then within that, the first thing that struck me, I think, with when we first got together and I did that first month with you was actually thinking about what is the core of what I actually want to do? Who do I want to work with? Rather than trying to do everything, mm. what's the key thing? What's the key thing I want? And who do I want to do that with? And that was really useful. So it was the first time I had crafted a focus to my speaking and my coaching, et cetera. And that mm -hmm. was quite scary because, you know, I had never, I'd never had done that. I'd kind of just, oh yes, I'll do that. And just kind of bobbied along and without not a real plan. And um, yeah, so it, it was a challenge, if you remember, for me to actually try and choose or select yeah. the thing that was most important. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that that it's like that for a lot of people because they think they're they might be leaving people behind or they should mm. be serving everybody, but actually showing who you really serve means that those people hear you faster and hear you louder than anybody else. So and obviously then it it instantly positions you as more of a specialist as opposed to someone who can do everything and can do anything, right? And yeah. obviously you you'll you get more clients that way as well because then people know you're for them. Yes, and I think the other thing that struck me at, at that time, um, people knew me for a variety of things around inequalities and healthcare, and people had asked me previously to coach or mentor them, and I'd kind of squeezed it in thinking, oh, do I fancy doing this? Shall I not do this? And when I started to think about more of a lifestyle change and started to think that actually I was working many hours um, mm. in, in a corporate strategic role, um, you know, as, as a kind of high level executive, but it wasn't what I wanted to spend my time doing. Um, mm. But I, I couldn't see a way of reducing my hours at work, if you see what I mean, mm -hmm. um, without losing some of my lifestyle, which, you know, I've worked 40 years for. So I didn't want to drop that. So um, after kind of doing the session, I started to think, well, actually, there's a possibility that I could, if I'm more business focused, in, and the purpose focused in my coaching and my speaking, mm -hmm. that I potentially could replace or more than replace the salary that I had and actually mm -hmm. have more time, And which kind of blew my mind really. How does it work that you do less hours of work and your income's more than what you were doing before? That, that really threw my mind really there. So. <laughs> and you've very quickly got yourself on, on a path to being able to replace that income. Like, I don't know how soon you thought it was going to happen, but you started the year on around 12K, 12K months, right? Yes, which, is, which, is, which was weird because that's three mm -hmm. months after I started. I, mean, I think the key thing for me was having that clear signature talk and that clear focus so that because what that helped me to do was actually say no to the things that weren't in line with what I wanted to do or I wanted to make my impact or leave my legacy. And mm. But it also meant that it was easier for me to explain or to, to identify what I did do and explain it to other people. And actually, far from me losing people, it multiplied the number of people who came. Because I suppose they could clearly see whether or not I could help them with what their problem was rather mm -hmm. than thinking that, you know, I just kind of do a bit of everything. Mm. So that was a big shock. And, and, and I have to tell the story big. about um, so go ahead. the masterclass. Yes. <laughs> we we had a, in, the, in the group, we were discussing um, perhaps just, you know, trying to do some speaking and networking around that. And I think I mentioned in the group that I had, you know, I had you know, quite a, well, I had over 5,000 Twitter followers that um, I'd, nev I'd never spoken, I'd never told them anything about what I was doing because it was the side hustle. Um, and then you challenged me, you said, well, you know, put a tweet out and say, I'm doing a, a little pilot, little masterclass for a, a freebie just to, to see what the interest was. And I think um, at the end of that uh, group session we had, I put the tweet, I just did one little tweet saying, I'm thinking about doing a masterclass on imposter syndrome, which is one of the areas that I do work on. Um, would anybody be interested? And I think I messaged you about an hour later going, I'd got like over a hundred people in the first hour who'd gone, yes, yes, we'll come. And then 
we ended up with, you know, people expressing an interest in the hundreds, which was just mad. And then it was like a bit scary. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm I'm sure for them they were like, finally, we're gonna get some more of what Laura's got to offer. Well, exactly. And that was the thing because I had never expressed that that's what I did, coaching mm. and speaking. And mm. I suppose the biggest shock for me was the number of people who, even though when I selected the date, they couldn't make the date. The number of them who messaged and went, I can't make that date, but I heard you speak in like five, six, seven, ten years ago was the longest. And I've always wanted to hear more from you, but I didn't know how to do it. And it was just <laughs> you know, mind blowing, really. So, I mean, Amazing. a few months later and um, I've reduced my days working in, in my to four days a week just so that I can keep up with you know the demands for the for the coaching and for the speaking and actually mm. what's happened is I done my first 12k month in January so that's mm -hmm. like less than three months you know three months before that I didn't even have a signature talk I, even, I just there was no talk um and, and how now, do you, yeah, yeah weird and how how do you feel now knowing that that like having a signature talk like that can work for you every time you speak as opposed to like having all of these topics? Um, what I'd say, Moira, Moira, is I've become less frantic in my speaking because I'm not trying to do a new thing every single time. Mm. I've got that as a, my signature talk is is a core piece of work that I know well and I just kind of adjust it to whatever it is that I'm doing so I've used the same signature talk from that you know that quick the you know, sample masterclass talk I've, I've used the same focus talk for like a four-hour masterclass which people mm -hmm. paid to come to this time to mm -hmm. doing a 20 if someone gives me a 20 minute um speech and then at Marrakesh, I used a slice of it for, you know, a, what was it, two minutes? And then you, we changed it. Was it three minutes we started with? I think it was two minutes. We're talking about the retreat that we had um, a couple of months ago. That's what Marrakesh was. But yeah, you guys had two minutes. Mm. But I and don't you mind. it. <laughs> well, yeah, but it was, do you know what, though? It, it was the scariest speech I've ever given. I do have to say that. But I did it, you know. Yeah. Um, and of course, that was another thing is that, what it's enabled me to do is worry less about what I'm going to say mm. because I know that I know it, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, that it's, it's structured knowledge, information, experience that I already had, you know, and I think um, that's what's worked well for me because I, you know, trying to squeeze a 40 year career into a two minute speech you know, I would have been over preparing and over worried about have I given enough? And now I kind of can can gauge it to the time that I've got. And then if mm -hmm. they say, can you do extra? I can just expand it a little without any mm -hmm. stress. Um, and I I can do it with or without any audio aids or visual aids I, I, because yeah. I know it. Yes, 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 yes. That's so good. That's so good. And Laura, what would you say to, you know, another woman who's in the position that you were in a few months ago with, you know, having this full time job, having this somewhat serious side hustle, but also having that knowing that it was in you that you wanted to get out and make a bigger impact and help more people? What would you say to somebody like that? I would say that, you know, the biggest the biggest lie I told myself at that point was that it was one or the other, that actually I couldn't, that the my potential for impact and my potential for um, making money and my potential for being able to afford the lifestyle that I had and still have was only to keep climbing the corporate ladder and, you know, or, or worry about staying at the top of it once I'd got there, that mm. there was no other potential way to do anything else. Mm. Um, and then, you know, I'm focusing on tasks. And what I've learned in the time in this it's four months, it's not that long. What I've learned in the four months is I've got many, many, many more tools in my toolbox mm. that, I, that, that are of value and that are able to both give me the opportunity to help 
women and support and leave a legacy as mm -hmm. well as my lifestyle and actually expand it, you know, expand the things I've done. I mean, I went to Marrakesh. I mean, in, <clears> in my 40 years, I've traveled in lots of different continents. I've been all over the place. The only continent I hadn't visited was Africa and I visited it through doing this. <laughs> oh, I bought this necklace just so that I would pass that on to everybody. Um, I can't really see it because, that, because of your yeah. name there. Move to the side a little bit so I can see oh, it. Let me just... The other way, the other way. Oh, yes. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, very nice, yes. So I, I love it. My, my, say that, that was the biggest lie I told myself. So my biggest learning was that actually less is more. Mm. And, that, and to have confidence in the fact that you know, I focus on women in leadership or women who are business owners who are trying to do that tail, tame to trailblazer work, who are who are successful and talented in themselves and then hit a point where they don't seem to be getting anywhere and they can't see any other way but to stay on the treadmill of doing what they're doing. Mm. Um, and I speak from experience and that's what I've learned as well, that actually I don't need to worry about um, what happens if because... I've lived this for 40 years, but actually I can save somebody else 40 years before they get to that realization. That's really the key thing I've learned. That's and so, um, that's so big. Yes. That's it's, so amazing. Uh, it's still scary though. It's still <laughs> scary, but it's scary in a good way. It's it's the first time I would say probably for 20 years in my career that I've had that stretch. Mm. But actually, you know, but rather than just going, oh, yeah, this is the same old thing. I'll do this answer. I've learned things. I've spoken to people that I would probably never I would never have met. I've visited continents I've never have met. And actually, you know, I, this year is my my 60th year. I'm 60 this year. And mm -hmm. most people are thinking about retirement. And I'm not I'm not thinking about retirement. as a, And I'm thinking about transitioning, transitioning yeah. from the side hustle to the main hustle. <laughs> so, that's what I'm I love it I love it thank you so much Laura you're so inspiring I love watching your success and the speed of your success so for me there's nothing more amazing than a savvy woman getting the tools and getting a bit of strategy and watching her skyrocket because that's exactly <laughs> what you're doing so if you're thank watching you. this watching the replay hashtag replay send me a message if you want to craft your talk you want to create a high ticket offer you want to basically do what laura's doing and be in the position that she's in literally months from now send us a message i'd love to hear from you laura thank you for taking your time out of your day to join me tonight you're more I really than welcome it. And thank you and thank you yeah for and we'll talk soon yes bye-bye bye bye everyone